Good evening and welcome to the school board meeting Tuesday, December 10th, 2002. And if we could start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There is one adjustment to tonight's agenda, and that will be under new business. We will add F, uh, which is a speech trip to Natick, Massachusetts. Um, and for the approval of the November school board minutes, does anyone have any comments or questions? Everything was all right? Okay. Um, we will move on to um, the comments by the high school students. Good evening. Um, I'm just going to talk about some stuff and then Hillary can talk about some more stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny, we had different stuff to talk about. So, just all the sports teams at the high school are going pretty well right now um, swim team, basketball team, indoor track, everything's going well. There are a lot of participants, which is good. I think it's really good to have varsity and JV and freshman teams. I know there was um, some questions to cut back on funding, but I think it's really important to have all these teams because that's what makes it really strong. And Cape Elizabeth is a community where they have a lot of athletic participants, and I think that makes the school community really strong because the kids get to know each other better and they have more friends, and it's just a lot of fun. So I really think it's important that we keep a lot of teams and a lot of emphasis on athletics, which I know we do. Um, I'm just talking about the economics class. They had a couple of field trips. One of them was pretty good, and the other one was not so good. But uh, first one was to New York City, and it was done overnight for a weekend a couple of weeks ago, probably about uh, almost a month ago now. But they went to see the New York Stock Exchange and uh, get a good experience of what market trading is like, and uh, got to see the floor. But the problem was. Uh, they stayed over in a hotel, and a lot of the students, most of the class, uh, used marijuana and drank a lot of alcohol. And um, when the teacher found out about this, most of the students were suspended, except for like six kids out of 22. So it was a pretty big deal. And uh, a lot of kids kind of thought it, was, it would be fun, you know, to have a uh, good time at the expense of their school. But, you know, it's just kind of unfortunate that we had to have that happen. But I think. Uh, with the punishment from the high school, maybe people will learn a lesson. Uh, the second trip was actually two days ago, and uh, the economics class it was a successful trip. They went to Augusta. You got to meet the governor and the governor-elect, and um, hear from Rep. McLaughlin, sit with the governor for about an hour, and he talked to him about taxes and how the government works and, and the economics of Maine. So it was pretty good. Um, one more thing I'm going to talk about is we have a school raffle at our high school called the Siddhartha Raffle. And uh, one of my teachers, Mr. Cooper, is kind of organizing it. But most of, this, most of the uh, actual efforts are managed by the students. So there are a few kids who are helping. And I should, sorry, I should explain what Siddhartha School is. Uh, there's a school in Tibet. But actually, it's a Tibet that part, uh, part of Tibet is actually in India. And that's where the school is. So China has not closed them down. And that's why there's still a school there. But they are in uh, need of desperate funding to fund a school that can give uh, the Tibetan children education on their heritage and give them Tibetan education, teach them Tibetan, so they don't lose their culture. So our school is helping them, and the kids in our school are doing a really good job. They have a raffle, and uh, people have donated a lot of stuff to the raffle, such as a couple of laptop computers and a lot of smaller items. And uh, the hope is to raise $1,000 to send to that school, which goes a long way in that um, part of the world. The next thing I was going to talk about is uh, the math team. The math team is doing really good at Cape. It's uh, an ex extraordinary amount of people are participating. We had about six teams at the last meet where the other schools had one or two. That's really good. It gives students an experience to do something that's uh, you know, intellectually challenging. That's fun. You know, I don't know how <laughs> fun it is for everybody, but we had a lot of kids go. so. I think they had a good time and just uh, 
shows well for our school, and we have a good focus, and students actually enjoy academics, which I think is pretty cool. Um, we have a meet tomorrow, too, so good luck. Anyway, we also have intramural, sport, intramural sports at our school, which uh, the SAC has plays a big role in setting those up. Uh, we had 5-on-5 five five football, and we're going to have 3-on-3 three three <coughs> basketball. We're hopefully planning to have frisbee and volleyball tournaments. But these teams are just, you know, any, anybody can do it. You don't have to be good at it. And you just go and have fun, and they have a little tournament. So I think that's good for students to have some experience playing athletics, even if they can't make varsity. Or, you know, JV don't want to play in a regular athletic team. Hillary has much to say, too. <laughs> Um, something that the students are planning right now is the Winter Carnival, which um, would, we would have a dance and some in-school activities similar to the homecoming that we had this fall. It would be a week, long, a week of activities during school, maybe some sort of pep rally. I don't think we figured it out quite yet. It would be in late January, early February. Um, also, the SAC is really starting to get going now. We've broken into subcommittees, the Activities Committee, the Academics Committee, and the Climate Committee. The Activities Committee is working with a uh, Winter Carnival Committee to um, work on the activities for that week. The Academics Committee is working on teacher slash course surveys for the end of the year. And also um, <coughs> looking into moving some of the students from the cafeteria in study halls there. In the morning periods A, B, C, and D, the students um, with study halls are in the cafeteria and it's really hard to get work done in there. So we're looking into having an alternative place other than the library, which is sometimes closed, for our students to get their work done quietly without being distracted. Um, the climate committee is looking into maybe getting some murals put on the walls. It's still in the beginning stages, but right now I think they're looking for students who might be interested in painting or uh, participating in any way. Um, finally, uh, I'd like to address the, um, the new school policy. I'm not sure exactly in what stage it's in right now. Um, there was an announcement Friday regarding um, the students who participate in any extracurricular activity or sport um, are not allowed to attend any party where there might be drinking at all. And students are really confused about this. They want clarification, what they're able to do and not able to do. I think there have been a lot of mixed reactions to it. And kids just really aren't sure what's happening right now and are looking for clarification on it. And that's about it. Any questions? Are there any questions or comments? Um, I have a comment about um, the, the situation and the trip to New York. And, and I thank you for being candid with us and, and making that part of what you talked about tonight. Um, and even though I think I can speak for all of us that we're very disappointed that that situation happened. Um, I think that the, the students that were there that did not partake in that, um, that was a very good choice for them. Um, and, and I just want to say something to the effect that, that we um, appreciate that it wasn't everyone and that but, they stood up yeah, for I'm themselves. I'm sure they feel that same way. And uh, you know, it's good that some people I mean, there was a sizable minority that uh, didn't partake in it because they realized what was wrong. So. And I think that after this, people will take it much more seriously. And I think the students who did make the mistake of dr drinking or using marijuana on the trip, I think they realize now the impact of what they did. And that kind of, it kind of ruins the, the trip that could have been something special for years to come for other students. And I think they realize that. And that they're very sorry that they made such a mistake. Thank you. And now our middle school students. Hi, I'm Elise Winnie Roberts. And I'm Elise Maloney. And we'll start off today, um, the middle school received their report cards for the first trimester. Um, in fifth grade, they are finishing up their uh, student council elections. And 29 fifth graders um, actually ran in the first stage, and they narrowed it down to six um, last week, and on Friday they'll have the final election. And sixth grade, not much is going on, but the teachers just said that it was going smoothly. Um, the seventh and eighth grade, is, they're both going well. We had our winter dance last Friday, and Elise will talk more about that. 
Um, the main focus in seventh grade is their laptops. They're becoming more and more accessible. The kids um, now email their homework to their teachers, and they're doing PowerPoint presentations and learning how to make iMovies. And um, one teacher commented that it's going so well that it's becoming a way of being. Um, the I team and Mrs. Smeevog have been working on Project Build. I don't know if you guys know about that, but it's about the high school renovation and moving the kindergarten. And they have, well, the 28 students that are in the, on the I team have been excused from all their classes this week so they could work on it. And they're very excited for presenting to the meeting next time. Um, in the eighth grade, not much is going on, except for we finished our MEAs, and that went fine. The cookie dough sale seemed to be very popular, and um, you can pick up your cookie dough at the community service garage. For winter sports, um, the basketball team and the hockey teams both have great records, and the ski team hasn't started competing yet, but everything's going great. Um, as Elise said, there was a dance this Friday, this past Friday, um, from 7 to 10 at the middle school gym, and the first dance hadn't go, didn't go as well as we had planned. And um, or hope. So this um, student council really worked hard with talking with Mr. Casey and um, Mr. Dome about um, how we could improve it this time. And we came up with a rule where um, you'd get one warning, and then the second time you'd be sent to the office to call your parents and get um, picked up. And um, the student council members went around to different homerooms um, the week before um, the dance and talked about that and. Um, so, and then the dance went pretty well, and the teachers thought that it went pretty smoothly, and I know that a lot of the students had a lot of fun, despite the um, harsher rules, so. And then um, the community center, Mrs. Weatherby came to talk to the student council, I think it was two Fridays ago, about um, possibly having a, a sock hop type dance for the fifth and sixth graders, and then the seventh and eighth graders, um, like, I think it was once a month, and um, there'd be dancing and games and movies, and. Um, we thought of, that it was a good idea and that students would really enjoy that. And that's supposed to start in, I think, like around March. And um, there are some band concerts tomorrow, 5th and 6th grade band and 7th and 8th grade jazz band. And Thursday, 7th and 8th grade band and chorus in the Bristol Cafetorium. And a bunch of uh, advisors in the student council are adopting a family for the holidays um, as part of a, a charity that they'd like to contribute to. And as we said before the last meeting, um, we a lot of the students felt that the um, lunch time for 7th and 8th graders was a lot shorter than it should have been. So uh, some of the student council members went down and talked to Ms. Hutton about it. And um, right before lunch, we have a half hour period of some students go to study hall and some students go to band or course. And the students from study hall are getting let out five minutes early to go down. And by the time they get through the line, then it's, the line is empty for the band and chorus members to come through. So it's, and so we started that right after we got back from vacation. And as we know, it's going. We're having a lot more time to eat very much. Any questions? Any questions or comments? Um, well, one thing that Elise said, and I'm not sure that all of the school board members are aware, um, so I'd like to just expand a little. Um, we, the I team at the middle school, which is 20-some kids, um, there, there were nine kids that are working on a project um, for us, for the renovation project. And they were nominated by their teachers. They're part of the I-team. They are excused from their classes um, this week. And what they will be doing is they're putting a presentation together for us using PowerPoint, iMovies, and, and digital, just still digital photography. And we have asked them to put a presentation together um, when we make our presentation on the renovation project to the town council in January. So that will be part of what we present, and the seventh graders are doing it for us. Yeah. Thank you. Communications. Um, I'd just like to, among the communications, bring to your attention um, a letter that uh, was written um, to
to Michael McGovern, myself, and um, Chief Williams regarding the traffic issues at the high school, especially in the morning. Um, this isn't anything new. It's something that um, comes up on a regular basis. Um, but I felt it important to share that with you uh, as these concerns come from the public. Um, and I don't know what the answer is, but my suggestion is that, that we try to do something collaboratively with the town, um, at least to create a safer situation for drop off at the high school in the morning. And I, again, not knowing what the answer is. I think it is something that the time has come that we need to address that. Um, and I think, you know, many of us have heard, or in some of us have experienced it firsthand, um, the traffic situation in the morning. But I think this is the first time that we have received a letter from a parent that, that Tom has forwarded. So um, I, we will address it with the... Yeah, if you'd like me to, what I, I think might be appropriate is it's from the school board, um, and I know you all share that. And one time I think I've had a conversation with, with every one of you um, that on behalf of the school board, um, if you'd like, I could put something in writing expressing our concern and our willingness to, to work with the town um, to do something for that 20-minute period of time in the morning. Because I think so we're all we get concerned. In writing. to have somebody there. Well, I don't know if we should come up with an answer. I think we, we just want to express our concern about the issue and that we'll look, we will work with the town, but I don't know if it's, it's our place to, to come up with a solution. Okay, because it's just as bad in the afternoon, or almost as bad in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my comment. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's obvious that this uh, the individual wrote the letter is very familiar with what's happening in the morning, probably less so in the afternoon, and the afternoon is every bit as bad as the morning, so we should not limit any request or uh, to the council or the police department to just the AM hours. Just both both issues. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that there, you know, I know that school board members have received comments from a lot of parents. I know that some parents have. Um, indicated to me that they have contacted the police station regarding this issue. Um, I know that some of the building committees have talked with traffic studies when the community services building was built. Um, so I think the information is there. What I, I'd like to propose is that if we do send a letter, um, that we set up something where the three departments, the town, the police, and the school could sit down and actively work out a plan for how to address this with the information that we have. And is there anything um, that we should provide um, for this meeting, whether it be more letters from concerned parents or teachers that are using this facility? Is it best to have it in writing, um, email, or is, once it's over the phone, does it become a... No, I, I think that, that people are well aware of the situation. I don't, I don't think mounting signatures and letter writing, is, it, it, I don't think it, it's needed because I think the town's well aware, we're all we're well aware of what the problem is. Um, and just, I think the three parties sitting down and discussing alternatives and what the solutions might be, might be the way to go. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about being a little more assertive, like trying to schedule a meeting or whatever? I think that would be productive. Yeah. I think I, I just think it's important that um, that it be recognized that this has been an issue that we've brought up. I know I, as a board member, as well as a parent, have brought brought this situation up. We've got a combination of factors that just potentially spell out disaster, which is young and inexperienced drivers, a narrow passageway with no no traffic control, basically and um, the, the additional issue of both parents and kids being in a hurry. And it's, um, I think that has been communicated, and I think maybe by a consensus of the board, we could ask you, Tom, to take, take the lead and express the concern that this board has had, and you know, it, it's now resurfaced again. It's a matter of public safety, and it does need to be addressed. And I think that the, the board, by consensus, can can, can request that, that that be 
communicated and that um, you know we we'd really like to see and would cooperate and be helpful to to uh, facilitate some action some some resolution it, mm -hmm. it needs to be addressed it's actually, it's actually getting more mm -hmm. more people are cruising down the, the breakdown lane and the bike point. lane than ever used to and you know you can't tell where some of it's where people are actually turning and, yep. and and, and I think, as Elaine said, if we even facilitate the idea of getting together with the other groups um, in the letter that we write, would be a good idea to get the ball rolling. The only other item I wanted to bring to your attention under communication is I put a, a copy of uh, the Paycheck Press, uh, which is an effort that um, Sarah Simmons is making to communicate to staff the kinds of activities that are happening around assessment and professional development. Oftentimes we get so involved with many of the, these activities, we forget that the staff are working on their different issues. I think it's a nice way and a quick two pages to kind of let everyone know what, what's happening. <coughs> We'll move on to comments from the public. Are there any? No. I'm sorry. Excuse me, could you take the podium so that everyone can hear? Okay. I was just curious if the same group of students went to Augusta that went up to uh, the stock exchange. Yeah, it was, same it was the same group. Exactly. Um, yeah, there really was no opportunity on the trip to Augusta because it was completely supervised uh, 20, I mean, the whole time. I mean, throughout. The and it was a day trip. It was a day trip. Yeah. And I was wondering, you know, what type of, I mean, how long was the suspension that they had? Yeah, it was a two-day suspension. Yeah. Um, I should have to give you more details on the consequences, but, yeah, it was a two-day suspension. So I'm, I'm just pleased that it didn't interfere with further trips, you know, just a small group of kids preventing other students from doing what they should be able to. No, I agree. Yeah. Thank I, you. I was just going to add one thing that I... Um, I mean, just, I was just thinking about it, but this, um, Cape Elizabeth has this problem about drinking and substance abuse that we've had for a couple, uh, several years, and now it's just coming to light, um, perhaps with more restrictions from the new administration, that it's a real serious problem, and Cape Elizabeth may not be alone in this problem, but we sure do have a big problem, and uh, the administration is taking some steps at the high school, um, Mr. Shedd and Mr. Tingham are taking some steps to try to prevent this and stem this. Um, but I think the real the real way we're going to solve the problem is uh, by educating kids. And I think the Cape Life program, oh, I don't know the details of it. It sounds like a good idea. It looks like it's helping. But I think it's going to take a few years to um, set new precedents and you know get students to have an understanding that even though Cape Elizabeth is a small town, there may not be much to do. You really can't do this other stuff because it's damaging to you and damaging to the community. So I don't know what steps um, the school board can take or what they're going to do, but um, the high school is trying. With uh, of course, the high school is trying to uh, you know stop this problem. And so I don't know. It's going to take some time. Is there any questions on that? Do you have any suggestions for us? Um, well, I don't know. Um, with this new policy, Mr. Shedd. I personally agree with it. A lot of kids don't agree, but uh, I think with time, maybe most kids will. And that will be the norm. And the norm is, well, the new administration policy, I'm sure, is to do a more thorough explanation. But what I thought it was to be was uh, if anybody goes to a party or is involved with that substance abuse, then they're restricted from athletics. And because the majority of students of Cape Elizabeth High Schools are in athletics, and um, that will have a big impact on them. So it's kind of saying, if you do this, we're going to, you know, you won't be able to do your athletics, which you love to do, so don't do that. But I think, I don't have any um, specific suggestions, but I think 
it'd be good to start educating kids at a younger age and maybe forming different activities to do. Uh, it's pretty it's a pretty hard situation, I don't know. I, I was curious as to whether or not, because of the incident with New York, whether more chaperones were going to be required to go on these overnight trips. Or whether anything had been discussed about that or you know, whether a you know, an adult has to sleep in every room with a kid or or uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know the high schools discussed several several options with that. Yeah, we are going to have more chaperones at the dances, so we don't have substance abuse there. Well, I, I read about that, but I didn't know about the, the, yeah. you know, the trips, the sure. trips. So enforcement is continuing. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. I think the issue with the new policy is that kids are really confused about exactly what the rules are. I think I, I've had conversations with Mr. Tinkham concerning the contracts that you sign for athletics when you sign the contract at the beginning of the sports season, um, whether that's in the fall or the winter or the spring, or however many sports you play, although you are underneath, you're underneath the contract before you even sign it. So I think kids are really confused about how it works, and I think that kids who aren't involved in sports and are involved in other extracurricular activities are also confused as to whether or not they fall under this contract too. And I think that, I mean, there are always mixed reactions towards the new policies, but I think that what kids really want is clarification on what the rules are going to be, because I think a lot of people are confused right now. Okay. Well, I would think we could yeah, certainly do that. Yeah, that's something that's being by the high school. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking of having maybe a high school assembly where we could just, you know, um, Administration can tell us what's going on. So. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to recognition. We do have um, several students that are being recognized this evening under the National Merit Scholarship Program. Each year at, at, at this time, um, we're very fortunate in Cape Elizabeth to have the number of students that we do that are recognized under the National Merit Program. Um, the National Merit Program recognizes those students who have performed in an exemplary manner on the preliminary scholastic aptitude test. Um, there are a group of students who are commended students who rank in the top 5% of all the students who have taken uh, that test. And semifinalists are those students who rank in the top 2%. Um, we have, I think, 11 individuals being recognized, which is extremely high uh, for a school our size. And uh, I think it's a credit to our entire district for all the work that has been done, and also credit to the students who have been able to achieve this. So what I'm going to do is read the first certificate, and then if you would come up, please, and accept that with our, our congratulations. This is a certificate of recognition, um, and I know some people aren't, aren't here today because of sports events and other kinds of things. Presented to Jamie Derzowitz, this certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of outstanding academic achievement as a National Merit Scholarship Program commended student. Jamie here. Also commended student Carl Hagman. And another commended scholar, Sarah Bartlett. Uh, commended student Kate Gohegan, who I think is at a basketball. Commended student Adam Marvin. They're all home studying this one. Uh -huh. um, commended student Michael Palin. Uh, commended student Philip Parker.
semifinalist, Gene Connors. <coughs> semifinalist, Eric Robinson. Semi-finalist, Evan Michaels. And semi-finalist, Rebecca Clough. Thank you for coming. Congratulations to all of you. Now we will move on to the superintendent's report. Just a few items I'd like to update the, the board on. Um, the Education Foundation uh, has been working very hard. Um, they have had a successful uh, fall as far as fundraising and have been able to raise twenty dollars to $25,000, and of which they will be uh, designating approximately half of that uh, for another grant cycle. The application process will begin in the spring for grants to be awarded for summer and fall work. Uh, the other half of that money will go into a permanent endowment fund, and their goal really is to, <coughs> and to grow that endowment. Um, so we'll be hearing more. They're looking for, to begin in the fall a capital campaign, um, but this will be their second grant cycle. And as you read in the paper, anytime we see several activities that have taken place, um, the foundation has added funds to some of those act activities at each of the schools. Future direction planning, uh, we're continuing our work as our goal is this year to cre create our local assessment system. Uh, the school district's climate team will be meeting, meeting tomorrow um, to discuss uh, the district-wide behavior code um, and other issues relative to climate that's part of the, that is part of the future direction plan. Um, I've also included in your packet information on the proposed state funding model, model essential programs and services. Um, the superintendents from Cumberland County met last week um, and were told that the uh, commissioner will be proposing two budgets this year, one based on an essential programs and services model, which really takes a look at what are the costs, the inherent costs to run um, a K-12 program in the state of Maine, um, and then uh, figure out the funding model based on those essential programs and services. From what um, my understanding is in looking at the formulas, that fund that model would be as expensive and more than likely more expensive than our present funding model. Um, so with this, the economic situation in the state right now, I don't know if the essential programs model will, will pass muster with the legislature. Also, at this point, we really don't have any figures and numbers to know whether or not that particular funding model works out any better for Cape Elizabeth or will it end up costing us more. Um, so that, there's not enough data yet to, to be able to state that. Um, also, before I turn it over to Claire, um, just to let you know that if you remember last spring, we had a request for a, a, a leave, child rearing leave, which by contract um, can be for up to one year. Uh, the request was for a half a year with the possibility of extending, extending that leave to a full year. In this particular case, as provided for in the contract, um, Ann Valenti will be extending her uh, child rearing leave for a full year. And lastly, under my report, um, I hope you have all received a copy of the school district's newspaper, The View. Um, it was expanded this year from eight pages to 12 pages in this particular issue. And our goal is uh, to have another issue that will come up probably right around budget time so that we can get those facts and figures out, out to the public. 
but I've had a lot of positive comments from people who have just emailed about how they enjoyed uh, reading the articles, um, especially with the ones that are about the new staff. I thought that was a nice piece we added this year. Any questions on that before I turn it over to Claire? Claire is here this evening to just give you a brief review of um, the state review that we had on, of our special education program. Thank you. Uh, I can't believe that it was seven years ago when uh, the State Department came the last time to review the special ed program. It was right before I came on board, and they came this fall. And what I wanted to do first was acknowledge the work that the special ed team did over the last six years to really bring the program at the level that it was at. And one of the things that we were very pleased when we got the report was how well we had done. When the state comes to do a special ed review, what they're really looking at, unfortunately, is not what we're doing in the classroom, but the paperwork, mm -hmm. because that's how they judge our accountability. Um, we, what we're hoping for is, once we got the report, is to uh, fix the few things that were found to be um, in need of fixing so that we can close the case this year. Usually, schools will take at least two years, but we had just a few items and we feel comfortable that we can bring this all to closure this spring. What they look for when they come is to, uh, the continuum of services that we have, our referral and screening procedures, how we notify parents and, and get their consent for testing and so forth. Uh, how we, what other procedures we use during PT meetings. They check our IEPs with a fine tooth comb to make sure that all the language that needs to be in there is in there and that how we write our IEPs are written in such a way that they're measurable, that parents can understand them, are they aligned with the main learning results and so forth. They also checked our confidential uh, training procedures and they also check our classrooms uh, to make sure that the rooms that the students are using are comparable to the rooms that regular education students are educated in. Um, we had sent quite a lot of information to them prior to their visit. We had sent them all our um, teachers' names and the number of students they had on their caseloads, all of our special education policies. What they did with that is they made sure that our staff, of course, they reviewed to make sure the staff was certified. They also checked to see, um, they review any due process information that the state had on us. They reviewed all of our um, applications, our EFS 01 and all 05 and 07, as well as our MEA information. They sent out 100 questionnaires to parents. They did get 32 parents that responded. <coughs> when they came, they interviewed all of the special ed teachers, nine classroom teachers, uh, some educational technician and the building administrators. We have over 300 students with IEPs. Uh, they only reviewed 27 files. Out of those files, or 26 files, out of those files, if two or more errors were noted, then we were found to be in non-compliance. They, they review us for 45, in 45 areas, there were 10 areas that were found to need fixing, which is really great. Out of those 10, five had already, already been addressed in 1999, but they were addressed a couple of months after the state regulations came out, but we changed the language in our forms. But when they went back in those 27 files and they went back, some of them, the paperwork had yet to be changed, but those had already been fixed, so we're all set. One of the things that they have found was that our referral policy, we need to have a sentence added um, in the policy, which is gonna come to you tonight for first reading. They complimented the staff on uh, some of the initiatives that they have undertaken. They really like the fact that we are doing the teacher assistance team at Pond Cole, the student assistance team at the middle school, and then the high school has started their, uh, a similar team. They were um, quite impressed with the sequential skills program that the um, special ed team had been working on for the last, the last two summers, which was looking at the main learning results and analyzing 
some of the tasks that students would need to have in order to meet the content standard. And some of our students who present with severe disabilities needed to have those tasks even broken down to prerequisite tasks. And the team had worked on that for two years and they, had re they reviewed the work that the team had done and were quite pleased with that. They also mentioned a DP, DBT social skills program that we're just beginning this year. And this type of program is geared to assist students that have bipolar disorders or um, some emotional disabilities learn how to deal with and, and begin to address some of these issues. Um, so like I said, overall we have, uh, we were very, very pleased and for me personally, I really feel that the special ed team needs, the teachers need to be acknowledged for the work that they've done over the past five years. I don't think we would have gotten this kind of review without their work. Any questions? Claire, if I heard you correctly, most of this review was bureaucratic in nature. How much it's easy, it's easy for me to say that, yes it is, but I'll tell you something, Kevin. After they left, the special ed team and I were talking about it, and we were saying, if, if we look at the fact that those regulations have been written to protect students with disabilities, and we want, I think all of us, want to be in compliance. We want to be doing things correctly. So if we are doing that, so is, is that bureaucratic? Probably not. I think we, I think if we look at it from that point of view, we were okay with it. Well, I'm more impressed with what you do with students than yeah. the paperwork that you fill out. How much time did this take? The, the review? Yeah. They were here for three days. And how much work did you have to do to prepare for this? I would say the staff. The, the staff really didn't have to do anything. Okay. Um, out of my office, I would say probably a half day to get the, you know, the, to get everything together to send to them. So it wasn't uh, a lot of work to prepare for it. I think the anxiety of the staff, when you know somebody's coming to look at your paperwork, right. that was high. I mean, I know we. Were, we have to do these things, but I'm more impressed with what you and your people do with real life students than with uh, questionnaires and forms and everything else. So my compliments to the staff and yourself. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you, Claire. We'll move on to the principal reports. Um, Panko, Tom. Good evening. I think you already heard from the uh, middle school report that the MEAs in reading, writing, and health began this week, last week, and we're finishing up with makeups this week. I'm trying to keep a neutral tone about MEAs because I think we, we all have our opinions about the use of it and the content. I, I must say, though, that the items are, are seem to be well constructed and they are directly related to the learning results. My issue with uh, the MEA and any kind of large scale assessment is that there's a lag between the testing and the report. We don't get the report back until sometime in the spring. When we do get it, we, we analyze the results to see if there are gaps in coverage and where strengths and will, weaknesses might be in the curriculum. But it really doesn't give us the opportunity to adjust uh, instruction. Fortunately, though, this leads to my next comment. We uh, used one of our staff development days right before Thanksgiving under the direction of Sarah Simmons and the CIA team. K through 12 groups uh, met, reconvened to continue their work on aligning our curriculum and instruction and assessment with the learning results. This is another level, finer grain than MEA. So putting all that together, I think, will be really helpful. On the second day, each building uh, worked on their own projects that have been going on. Pond Cove uh, began by taking the oppor opportunity to work on something that's been of a weakness in the past few years, that is giving teachers who have been to a good conference, or in fact any conference or workshop or seminar, the opportunity in the forum to report back on what's been going on. We sent seven teachers to a guided reading conference in Portland in November, and it happened to be hosted by the authors that we get our guided reading model from. So these seven teachers came to 
the uh, meeting on Tuesday reported back and there was a good interchange about not only what they learned but about the quality of the workshop. And another teacher had been to uh, a workshop with teacher researcher Nancy Atwell, reported back, fielded questions, and offered some suggestions for helping our writing program. Second topic we discussed on that day was looping, which I think you know has been on vacation this year while we think about what we learned and gather data. And we got some preliminary feedback at the meeting. Then the topic uh, cycled through to team leaders and we're bringing it back for further discussion and maybe some eventual resolution starting at a staff meeting this week. Um, and the third topic was looping. Um, I think I reported last year that we had a pilot project in looping last year and it was so successful that we've taken it on school wide which, as far as I can tell, makes Pond Cove a little distinctive. Other, other schools around the country are trying loop, um, lesson study in different ways, but we seem to be the only one involving all teachers. Um, the reason we've dared to do this is that we've made connections with researchers in New York and California, and we're following a model that's based on getting goals, um, global goals, from the mission and vision and the climate committee work, which are then fine-tuned right down to the classroom level. So we have goals, believe it or not. Uh, we try to envision what we would like students to be like when they leave Pond Cove, identify gaps in their learning or characters that we'd like to address, then the teachers develop specific lessons around this. Each team has have, had the opportunity to do that and with some coaching from some outside experts. We've been through a cycle of the team developing a lesson a volunteer teacher, takes a lot of guts to do this, doing the group lesson, being observed, and the group debriefs afterwards, changes the lesson where they think it might be improved, and another teacher takes it through the second cycle for the same process. I have to say, having been through this a few times, it's not the lesson, <coughs> it's the exchange, it's the uh, professional talk that goes on, um, because I'm privileged to be at these meetings with the teachers discussing how they crafted the lessons, uh, how they talk to each other so respectfully, how they make suggestions neutrally and objectively about how to improve the lesson. It's a very impressive thing. So my hat's off to the following people who allowed the observers in so far this year. David Shields, Sarah Lewis, Janet Emberger, Holly Hertel, Linda Alfiero, and the next person up this week will be uh, Ingrid Stressinger. <coughs> Except for the wet kindergarten this morning, that's all the news from Ponco. Okay, thank you, Tom. Sure. Move to the high school, Jeff. Uh, this Thursday, two days from now, um, our mock trial team is going to court in Portland <clears throat> for the state semifinal. Uh, round and I would invite all school, any school board members who can take a little while. Uh, it really is, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's quite a neat, um, incredibly academically challenging program um, and really shows our kids in just a wonderful, wonderful light. It starts at 1045, I believe. I'm not sure of the courtroom. It might, it might be the old Supreme Court um, law court room in the Superior Court building. It's in the State Court building. Um, and they're going against Sanford, I believe. So we're going to have our hands full. Yesterday there was a uh, superb band and choral concert. Um, I want to offer, and I hope I haven't left anybody off from this list, but I want to offer special congratulations to soloists Anna Lombard, Carly Langley Wilbur, Bree Dowdy, David Faraday, Eric Robinson, and James Donahue, who were student soloists in both the choral and instrumental music performance. Um, thanks to Betsy DeGroff, and special thanks to our new instrumental music teacher, um, Tom Lazat, who has gotten very positive reviews from both students and parents for the work, for the work that he's done this semester at the high school. Um, Mr. Lazat, um, it's tough to come in and fill shoes of another outstanding band director who preceded him, uh, but I think Mr. Lazat is doing it and is doing it his own way, and I think it's really, really great. Um, just as in Pond Cove, our juniors um, have just finished taking MEAs. Today was the last regular day. We'll have our students doing some makeups as well. Um, and I want to thank the juniors um, who participated in this exam. I share some of Tom's misgivings and sort of ambivalent feelings about some aspects of the MEA. 
Um, and given that, I'm always impressed by how seriously they take a test that doesn't count for anything for them. Um, it really is quite an impressive thing. Um, Tom alluded to some major water problems that we had today, um, and you've probably heard more about this, but I thought I'd at least mention it as quickly in public session so the community can know something about it. My understanding is, and Ernie knows the technical details, my understanding is that what happened was a chain of events that started last night when a water main broke, um, upsetting some rooms in, in our school and screwing up our heating system. Um, and if I have this right, the water system was shut down for a period of time in order to make repairs, and then obviously turned back on later the way one would do it. Um, but something about the fact of turning it off, having it off, and then having to turn it back on made the pipes more susceptible to freezing, um, and some did burst overnight. So when I arrived, half of the kindergarten wing this morning, and with that had some math classrooms as well, the high school was flooded, um, really flooded. Uh, it was quite an impressive sight. Um, and there were torrents of water literally coming down into the parts of the library um, from several different areas in the ceiling just below the kindergarten wing because the library <coughs> is just below the kindergarten wing. I learned a lot about the geography of the building, which I really hadn't thought about before, about what's below and above what. Um, during the course of the day, several other rooms experienced leakage, uh, burst pipes or downed heating systems. Um, the staff scrambled to find spaces so that we could have our classes continue. Uh, the insurance adjuster, as the board probably knows, has been in to assess damage. The library has undoubtedly suffered the most damage. Uh, several computers at least are inoperable. Um, and unfortunately, Charlotte Hanna, um, a math teacher who was the recipient of a grant from the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, um, is at least temporarily out of service um, with the program that she had gotten with the uh, with the foundation grant that, was, that she was using in one of her, one of her math classrooms. Um, so that's too bad, but I'm sure, knowing Charlotte, she'll be up and running as quickly as folks can get her up and running. Um, I do want to point out how rapidly and how well Ernie McVeigh's maintenance crew and how well uh, our building custodian and the custodial crew responded to the problem today. Um, um, there were outstanding efforts really throughout the day by everybody, oftentimes people showing up within seconds of things things happening, reports of things going on in classrooms. Um, I do want to allay any student concerns publicly on TV that we will have school tomorrow. Um, and I've assured all of them that they should be doing their homework and studying for their tests. Um, I want to briefly um, just mention what, uh, what Hillary and Aaron were referring to. On Friday, uh, I did announce new applications of existing rules relating to drinking and substance abuse at the school. Uh, these rules reflect, or applications reflect, the recognition that students who are given the privilege of representing the school in athletics and in, and in student activities are, under both school board policy and school rules, held to a greater responsibility to do the right thing. Um, and the right thing for such students who find themselves hosting parties where students are drinking uh, or doing other things is to bring the parties to an end. And the right thing for such students in attendance at parties where drinking or other things are happening is to remove themselves, um, which many, many of our students do um, on a regular basis. Um, students who do that will not be punished for, for not doing so. Students who don't remove themselves will not be punished for not removing themselves, which is the consequence that they are increasingly facing in other high schools across the state and the nation. Um, <coughs> But they will have some questions asked to find out what happened to see if we can, until we complete an investigation to see what, what happened. I do not have any expectation, um, and quite frankly, there's a part of me that doesn't have any hope that I learn about all the parties that take place in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I don't have any intention of making inquiries after every weekend, nor does Mark Tinkham. I don't have any expectation that any investigation will take a long time. Uh, we took a particularly long time with the most recent party in light of the incident that took place in Wall Street and out of a sense of obligation to those students, a few of whom are some of our best students at removing themselves or avoiding situations that they found themselves in in New York, which was very unfortunate. Um, and I have absolutely no expectation that these steps will solve the problem of drinking and substance abuse by Cape Elizabeth High School students. Uh, it is very clear that only a coordinated response by parents, students, police, the community, and the school, with parents and students having the most important role, can solve this problem or at least marginalize it, which is probably the most that anybody can hope to achieve. 
Uh, but as long as policy and the contract is in place, my job is to try to make it real and to enforce it fairly. Um, and at a personal level, I just can't tolerate a situation where the contract becomes a farce, where the community, uh, based on rumors and hearsay, thinks that the school is the problem because we're looking the other way or enforcing things with a wink and a nod. Um, this issue of drinking and substance abuse is not one that I keep, came to Cape Elizabeth to become the principal of the high school to try to solve. Um, it's not an issue that has been a theme in my work as an administrator in either of the other two schools that I've worked at, but it is unquestionably a huge issue for this community and for many other communities like ours. Um, and if our attempting to tackle it at the high school generates public discussion and debate about the proper role of police, schools, students, and police, even if the community ends up asking us as a school to step back from some of the things that we've done, uh, then I personally would feel that perhaps that's been a useful step uh, to at least generate the discussion because it's a very, very important issue. <coughs> I do have a copy of the, uh, the rules. Uh, we're going to be starting to post it around the school tomorrow, uh, tomorrow so that students, the confusions that students legitimately do have will begin to be answered. Uh, so that will be happening. Any comments or questions for Jeff? Bravo. Yes, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Hey, the middle school, Nancy. Good evening. Uh, first of all, to just to bring you up to date with what happened um, on November 26th, the staff development day, just prior to the Thanksgiving break for teachers, as Tom already reported, on that Monday, we worked as a system on some things led by Sarah Simmons. On the 26th in middle school, people had a chance to work on their individual professional development plans, and many of these plans are wonderful, and people are working on all sorts of projects for their classes or in small groups. It also gives us an opportunity, though, for some of our staff members to offer workshops for their peers. And Rick Madden offered a 90-minute workshop on activities that someone could do with their advisory groups or their homeroom guidance groups. And that was well attended by about 15 of his colleagues, and they had a great time sharing ideas and having a chance to just pick his mind of all these kinds of things you could do for those types of activities. Later on in the day, um, Beverly Bisbee and Gary Lenoy led a roundtable discussion about using the laptops. This was particularly directed towards some of our eighth grade teachers, and a number of them did attend. It was a small number, but they were able to work that into their activities and their plans and just talk about what it's like to have the laptops in the classroom, some of the things the students are doing, because next year, it's really important that we support that eighth grade team. The students are going to have a whole year on them of using those laptops and using them as learning tools. So we're really trying to think of lots of ways to invite the eighth grade teachers into the process, and that has worked very well. It gave us a further opportunity to work with a consultant we hired to come in and work with some of our seventh grade teachers. As we work with, um, a, we don't have a lot of students who fall into this, but some students who um, perhaps when they came to our school were in English as a second language programs, ESL programs. They have graduated from those programs, but then you have uh, about a five to seven year time period before they're totally um, immersed and have learning in the English language down. And so just some suggestions, listening to things we were trying, suggestions that consultant might have for teachers as they work with these students. And that was attended by about six of our staff members. So um, it was also another opportunity for people to get together, not only on those individual plans, but to have some of those meetings that are sometimes hard to schedule. Just as Jeff and Tom reported, we are also finishing the MEAs with our eighth graders, the last day of makeup um, is tomorrow, and then we will have those finished and be ready to send off. And appreciate everybody's good work with that. Our eighth graders, when they came back from the Thanksgiving break, that's what we started Monday with, and um, they were with us. And in fact, we had a new student who joined us that day, and uh, he met with Rick Madden that first day of the testing to get oriented, to get his schedule, to do all of that, and then joined class after the MEAs. Um, but he came in on Tuesday ready to participate in those MEAs and finish them up on Monday. When I saw him come in today and said, well, no testing today, he did have a big smile on his face. So I think he was glad that part was over. 
Elise and Elise mentioned about the cookie dough being picked up and just to clarify the pickup date for the cookie dough is December 12th which is Thursday at the community services garage and it will be from 2:30 to 6:30 that people can pick the cookie dough up to let you know that our seventh and eighth grade math team recently competed in a meet in Kennebunk and the seventh grade team came in second and they had a great time and enjoyed that and they look forward to the next meet and um, they've already picked out what they're going to do for uh, practicing. When they came home that evening they told me they were going to practice every day and really get good. Since then I think they've scale that back to they're going to practice as a team really hard once a week, but um, their intention and energy is there. Also, last week we hosted a debate meet, and uh, we've had a little bit of difficulty in our speech and debate program in that not a lot of other middle schools are able to feel the team, but one community that we've worked steadily with for the last six years is Freeport. They were there, and our debaters and speakers had a great time. Um, debating and speaking with the Freeport people. We are hoping at the next meet that Ponell and Falmouth will also join us. They are people that have joined us in the past. Um, but we do have a large, no a good number of fifth and sixth graders that are in the speech group and also um, seventh and eighth graders in the debate group. This year we opened it up. We do have some sixth graders who also debate and they prepare and do a great job. It's fun to be around them and to hear their enthusiasm. The, I was, I was going to talk a little bit about the I-Team project, but Elise and Elise beat me to that, and then their comrade in arms, Marie, filled in with the other information. So um, what I really, all I really want to say about it is I want to thank the school board for being willing to look at the seventh graders as perhaps a group of people who might be able to help you in your work, because it gives them an opportunity to really show all of you and then through those public presentations to show the community how they are able to use their laptops as a tool. The work they're doing is not about the laptops, it's about the work that they're doing. Each day for me they fill out a piece of paper and the question that I've asked them is, what do you know now at 2 o'clock that you didn't know at 7.30 this morning? And yesterday a lot of them wrote that they learned about storyboards and about how to plan a project and really um, think that out and what they were going to do. Um, today, I, I will say to you that um, several of them who had been um, called upon to come down and do some filming at the high school were quite impressed with the leakage problems at the high school. Um, and that probably did dominate their learning for the day. Uh, but one young person wrote that according to that person's opinion, unsolicited, unsolicited, the high school needed to have some work done on it before he got there. So um, he's sort of looking ahead. I think he'll be willing to help the building advisory committee with some projects. But really also to that whole project, it fits right in. Today, everything we do, we always ask, how does it align with the main learning results? Is there alignment? And in the main learning results, if you look at their six guiding principles, four of them come to my mind right off that this project is all about. It's about being a problem solver, an effective communicator, a responsible citizen, and a collaborative worker. And when they're working down in Sarah Simmons' area, and when you drop in there throughout this week, that's exactly what you see in action all the time. And I greatly appreciate Marie's time, Elaine's time, and Susan's time, because um, they've come and they've worked with them. And it gives them a chance all to see you modeling what responsible citizens in a community do and what it means when you're on a school board and you work on projects and things. So that's, that's been great for them, and they're having um, a wonderful experience. Two of them tonight assured me they thought they might be done early. But um, the rest of the people kind of looked rather shocked when they made that announcement. So we're not really ready to promise you that. But um, they are excited about their work, and they feel they can do it. That's, that confidence is great. For the, just an aside, um, tonight when... After school, I was talking with Matt Whaley really briefly, and just another great thing about the whole laptops, in the um, seventh grade, they do a unit in science called Dynamic Earth. This sort of builds on work that they've done earlier in their learning, and in fourth grade, I know they do a unit on rock and minerals, and Matt Whaley and Ingrid Stessinger are gonna work together with one of Matt's science classes, and they're gonna go over and use the laptops or invite Ingrid's class over, and they're going to do some work together on that to share some information that they have found and ways to do um, different types of learning. So once again, another great opportunity. Thank you.
Thank you, Nancy. Any questions or comments, yeah, Nancy? Um, sure. On the topic of laptops, uh, my recollection is that there was some prepackaged software in there that could assist with learning, and we had kind of talked about that, and I got bogged down with other things. Have you had an opportunity to speak with Bev Bisbee about that? Um, I spoke with actually um, Bev Bisbee and also with Tammy <coughs> Thatcher, who works with um, several of our students and sort of the team in general. And um, they didn't have any specific statistics about how many students had gone to that site right. or anything. What I think one of the things I've noticed, Kevin, in each one of our four parent evenings, students showed people how you could use that. And um, some of them were, the, some of the students were doing things that hadn't got as involved in that um, yet. I think another place that I could go, and I haven't, don't have a specific data on this, um, recently the science teachers had the students do a project in which they used the laptops a lot. They also use them a great deal in social studies when they're doing projects and reports. And um, the students seem to know that as a resource. We don't have specific isolated data of how many times they've gone to that. A particular yeah. piece of software. I, I just have a sense, and a re I realize that the software is not licensed to the entire school, only but only to the laptop users. But there might be some application for the <coughs> students that are having difficulty with learning how to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's any feedback on that, I'd be interested in hearing it. I, mm -hmm. I think it might have application through all three buildings. Sure. Mm -hmm. We can collect that. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, and now we'll move on to the committee reports. Um, the Finance Committee, Elaine. Yes, the uh, Finance Committee uh, met prior to this evening's uh, school board meeting. Uh, we did sign some warrants and uh, reviewed the appropriation reports. Uh, the two other items uh, that we covered was a uh, review of the 2003-2004 Capital Improvement Plan. Um, I want to thank Gurney for coming and taking us through that with Pauline. And um, that will be submitted um, to our town manager for initial review and in the start of our budget process. Um, we also reviewed uh, the PATHS 2003-2004 uh, budget. And I thank Kevin for uh, bringing that forward to us. Um, and I believe we'll be taking a, a vote on that later this evening uh, before it's brought back. Um, Ernie did talk very briefly, um, not briefly, but he did go into, <laughs> now that I think about it, quite extensively about the, uh, the water problem at the high school. Um, and uh, I know we've got an update on that, but probably the one impression that I, I got from our discussion in the finance meeting was that this was an indicator of some of the problems that we're starting to see in a 35-year-old building. Um, and as we go forward um, with our building renovation proposal, uh, this is an example of the types of things that we need to uh, plan for, um, and, or <laughs> hopefully not plan for. We can solve it with a renovation problem, and if not, we, then we need to take these things into consideration in our capital improvement budgets in the future. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Um, the policy subcommittee, Susan? Um, we met on December 4th. And um, what we did was to prepare four policies that we'll look at tonight for first reading. One was brought, brought to us by Claire um, as a result of the state audit, and um, that's on referral of programs for, um, special um, for students for special education and basically determines at what point it does the um, timing standard begin that someone is actually referred to the program. Um, so that's, as we kind of discussed earlier, it's more a process bureaucratic policy to pin that down. Um, the other policies that we'll be looking at tonight started um, at the beginning of this school year when uh, at our August retreat we decided that we would look at how we operate as committees. And so the policy committee at that point started looking at the policies that we have around policy adoption. Um, policy and policy adoption procedures. So those will be um, what we'll be looking at tonight. They came out of that and rather than spend more time on that now because we seem to have other priorities, we um, decided as a committee to also look at a policy around how to operate in absence of a policy, 
which we thought was um, probably something we should do. We found in the past that things come up and we, we look, we don't have a policy on it, and then we have no guideline how to operate um, when the policy doesn't exist. So we, we felt that was important. So those three will, are what we'll be looking at later. We also identified, um, Jeff brought to our attention that we needed policies um, around graduation of students under the new learning results, that there are going to be certain requirements that students are going to need in order to graduate. And we identified with that uh, actually a, a block of policies that we're going to have to develop related to learning results and also no child left behind. So, th so that's one more block of policies this group is going to need to look at this year in addition to the block of policies around code of conduct. So, so some pretty heavy duty work. Um, and some challenges this year, but uh, I think we're on track as far as um, getting those done. And uh, our next meeting will be January 8th, 12 o'clock noon, and we'll report after that. Okay, thank you, Susan. You know, one of the things that I've neglected to mention for the last two months is um, we, in August, the school board had a retreat and, and we talked about um, our different subcommittees and what we were going to do to improve them and um, organize them a little better. And I have to say that our policy committee, the work that's coming out of the policy committee and the organization in the policy committee is absolutely fabulous. And um, Susan, I think, has been the, the one person on all of our committees who has really followed through with everything that we have asked to be done. Um, and so I can't go another month without saying that about Susan. I mean, the work that comes out and the reports that everyone is getting, everyone who is not at these meetings can understand exactly what goes on at the meetings. So thank you, Susan. This is wonderful. Um, and now we can move to unfinished business to the um, building advisory committee recommendations for the renovation project. And um, everyone has in their packet the um, options that we have been discussing for the past month um, at our last school board meeting and um, at our last workshop. Um, on the high school renovation project, we will be looking at option A for $9.4 million and option B for $7.5 million. The Pine Cove edition, option A is 2.5 and option B, 1.475. Um, at, at this point, do, do we take a motion or do we have a conversation? Well, I think it probably be most appropriate to have a motion first and then a discussion. Okay. Um, so I think we need a motion. Elaine? Uh, yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion that the school board support the building advisories committee recommendation uh, for option B on both the high school and the Pond Cove building projects. Okay, and now we are open for, oh, a second, I'm sorry. Um, George, second. Um, and now we're open for discussion, comments, questions. Anything, and we have Bob Howe here um, tonight as well with all of our drawings, so if there's anything that needs to be clarified or any questions that anyone has. Okay, then, can, Jennifer? I guess looking at our proposed CIP budget tonight for next year, um, I guess my only hesitation would be is that B envisions that a lot of this work is going to end up in our CIP. And it just makes me nervous. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd rather do it once and not have to come back and ask for more money in three years. And, um, that's it. Um, it, I, I can address that. The, the work that we are doing um, 
in our CIP plan um, that is not part of the building project are basically redoing several classrooms um, in the math wing, in that kindergarten area, that, that those we felt were a continuation of, of the work that, that our own facilities manager does um, every year, and we felt that he would be able to continue to renovate um, classrooms at a much lesser cost than, than what we could do in this project. I think the other piece, too, is that um, the Building Advisory Committee, there was a long discussion about this, and, uh, and I think it came down to what, what's, what's an, an amount of money that we can include in the renovation that, that um, the community might be willing to accept, and I, and I guess you never know that answer, and, and you're right. We could add more into that, and the Building Advisory Committee discussed that. Um, and felt that this is this is a number they could live with, and and if we could add more into it, would it help our CIP? Sure, yeah, you're right. Well, I guess what I but there isn't anything what we, we uh, the building advisory committee felt was important not to leave out anything in this project that we would never include in our CIP, such as the addition to the cafeteria. That isn't something that we're going to see in our, our CIP. So those kinds of things, I think there was a real conscious decision to, to take a look at those issues. And the things that have been left out um, are mostly site work, um, which we felt we could live without, um, and a few classroom remodeling kinds of issues that we do tend to do on a regular basis in our CIP. It just will take us a little longer. We, the, the committee had many conversations um, about, and we went back and forth about, let's not be sorry for anything that we're not including in this plan. I don't want to end up saying, oh, gee, you know, we should have asked for more then. And that's my only concern. I mean, obviously, you guys went over this and over this, so I, I will take the word for it, but that's just my understanding. <laughs> And I just want to add that, you know, a lot of people have, have conveyed to building people and school board people about why there was an option A um, and why there was an option B and what the differences are. And um, I, I think that while we would all like to see option A because it would fulfill all the needs that were identified by the firms that we hired to look at our schools and our facilities. Well, I'm not necessarily saying I want to go to option A. But there, but there were things on A that would, you know, whether they be um, bleachers or, or a lighted field or, or a, a concession stand, that um, there are some communities that would choose to put that in there. And the, and the message that I think the Building Advisory Committee uh, wanted, was hearing, um, from community members, um, et cetera, was that this was not the ideal time for us to be looking at those. Perhaps some of the things might be in our CIP budget, some of it might be another community group that could tackle that. And the advisories committee's job was to come up with a second option that, as Marie said, was a number that this community um, would feel comfortable with while still um, doing what we needed to have done to keep our schools safe and updated and ready for the next 20 to 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's where, you know, option B came in. And that's why I feel, you know, as a school board, that I'm thankful that everybody seems to have faith in what the advisory committee has done in the job, along with Bob Howe. Um, and I feel very comfortable with B. And, and um, I'm, I think that the work will be done to what we need. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps answer Jen's concern, which is my concern, that, that you've looked at it, and, and Marie, maybe that you've looked at it in the detail that you have uh, and can respond that you think that we'll, we can manage the, you know, the <coughs> very old systems that we have still with Plan B and the CIP budget as we go forward. And I guess my other comment is I think some of the lack of um, discussion at this point reflects the in-depth 
work that went into this and the preparation that the committee gave us ahead of time with bob's participation in the information that we were given in a way that had many layers to it but with very strong backup and um i just i just want to speak to the fact that i think the process was quite remarkable in the amount of detail that that people looked at and that still brought it brought the detail to us but in a way that we could understand it grasp and understand it, and i think make a decision quickly and um and I just want to, you know, remark that that was really helpful for me coming into this. Thank you. George? I just um, piggyback on what Susan is saying. I, I think that um, there's really not a lot of questions. There's really no questions in my mind. Um, and I think that that is uh, to the credit of the Building Advisory Committee. Um, and Marie, I think that you've done an outstanding job of providing leadership. Um, this has been a very, very long-term project. Um, but I think, um, as Susan said, the process has worked well, and it's because there's been really excellent planning. There's been great fact finding. I know, you know, I can ask you any any historical question about any building on the campus, and I, I know that you you know the answer to it. Um, the analysis and the attention to detail has been um, has been great. I think the stakeholder involvement, which is absolutely critical, um, has very much been a part of it. Uh, communication has been done well, and certainly the communication challenge probably is uh, is a bigger one that lies ahead in terms of in, uh, enrolling uh, the rest of all of the the key stakeholders. Um, but it's been a lot of hard work and time, and and um, you know I'd like to commend uh, that uh, building advisory committee who has stuck with it, and and commend you for your leadership. Thank you. Um, and, and I think, again, I will just repeat that the, the Building Advisory Committee feels very comfortable with this plan. Um, and comfortable from the point of view that they feel that our needs will be taken care of. Our needs will be taken care of. There were, you know, things that certain people wanted that, you know, we just felt that we couldn't ask the community we couldn't ask the school board, we couldn't ask the town council or the community um, to support those things um, in these times right now. So what we have and what we're looking at, we feel comfortable with. Kevin? I can only echo what's already been said. Uh, the committee did their job and they did it extremely, extremely well. I have no questions tonight because all of my questions have been asked and answered in prior sessions an answer to my complete satisfaction. Uh, I agree with uh, what you're saying. I support proposal B for both buildings, particularly in terms of the Pond Cove because the design permits the future expansion and that piece is built in. Um, will we need it? I think, you know, under the best circumstances, I would have liked to have seen that, but this is reality, and again, I am very, very comfortable and appreciative of the work that the entire committee did on this. So plan B for both will have my support. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Well, I just think that you guys have done a great job. I, I feel disappointed that we can't have it all, but I don't think it's fiscally responsible to ask for it all. So we're getting the best that you can offer us because of the work you've done, so we can't second guess. Um, the time and effort and the, I mean years have gone into this this is not a new process two and a half thank you <coughs> thank you both. Okay. okay so then can we take a vote okay all those in favor of option B for the high school renovation project uh, which is seven seven million five hundred and thirty thousand seven hundred and fifty eight <coughs> and option B for the Pine Cove edition which is one million four hundred and seventy five one million four hundred seventy five six hundred and forty eight um, all those in favor seven zero um, now um, at at this point we will take this to um, the town council um, these two plans uh, early in January 
next week uh, Elaine and I and Tom have a meeting with um, a couple of the town council members to determine a date for that meeting. So as soon as we know, I, I will get that information to everyone. Um, and as we have mentioned a couple of times before, um, we will have a product, a presentation, uh, the end of this week from the seventh grade team. And if any of you guys are available any time for the, the rest of this week, um, the seventh graders are working in Sarah Simmons professional development area and if you just popped in there even for five minutes to see the kind of work that, that these kids are doing um, it's really <coughs> amazing. and Susan Elaine and I are uh, taking them around tomorrow um, they have a lot of interviews we have 11 scheduled interviews in the high school with uh, Jeff and with um, the teachers and Ernie McVean and the guidance office, all of the appropriate areas. Um, interviews with uh, Tom Eismeyer, the kindergarten teachers, parents, and students. Um, so they need to put all of this information together. Um, and their goal was to visually show, um, show us why these two projects need to be done. Um, and we had asked them when we presented this project to us that you know that was the single question that they had to keep answering as they were putting all of these slides together. We basically laid out the project and have left everything up to them. Um, so we're, we will see a finished product uh, Friday afternoon. And that's that on the building project. Um, next, we move to new business. Um, the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions. I'd like to recommend to the school board following individuals uh, <coughs> with regard to coaching positions. Ryan Green, a diving coach. Um, Abigail Flynn, assistant track coach. Zachary Stegman, assistant Nordic coach. Those are all at the high school. And at the middle school, Tony Jones, eighth grade boys basketball, and Gary Newell, seventh grade boys basketball. Okay. Do we have a motion? Oh, George, okay. I'm sorry. I'll make the motion uh, that we. Uh, accept the superintendent's recommendations to athletic fee positions uh, for this winter. Thank you. A second? Susan? Um, all in favor? 7-0. Uh, next, um, we need to um, re-elect the superintendent for another year. Um, can we have a motion? Well, that wasn't hard. Everyone puts their hands up on this one. Okay. <laughs> Kevin? I move that we re-elect Thomas Forcella, superintendent of the Cape Elizabeth School District for the coming year. Okay. And a second? Second. Kathy? Um, all those in favor? Seven, zero. And I would just like to comment that I think we gladly do this. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> Um, next on our list is a proposal to restructure athletic administration. Um, as you are aware, uh, this conversation with regard to um, how we administer our, our athletic program has been going on for the last couple of years. Uh, one of my goals this year was to take a look at that structure. Um, as you, as this year, um, we have kind of a, a stopgap. Uh, approach to address some of the issues that are present at the middle school because the middle school has kind of been the stepchild in the in in this program um, just because of the sheer size of our program um, we've, we've done some things and through Nancy and and her staff at the middle school to try to address some of the issues and it's been quite successful but it's not a permanent solution um, we we are running that the, the program and administering it 
in the way you see in this in this pilot program but we would like to come up with and what my plan is after the first of the year is to form a committee which will look at a long term solution and that long term solution also might be a phased in solution obviously because we have to consider the economic climate that we're in now but I think it's important as we look at our program that we have a goal that we that we know where we want to be as far as our athletic program and how we are going to administer it and implement all the policies that that we created last year so I think the policies that were created once once we started to look at how we were going to implement those policies we found that that the way our structure was was put together that was very difficult to do that one thing I would like to have on this on the committee is a school board member so if there's a school board member that is interested or if procedurally Marie if you wanted to point someone to that or ask for a volunteer I would like to get that group started and put together a proposal that will come back to the school board in February or probably be part of the budget process is there anyone that would like to volunteer to be part of this athletic restructuring I don't care okay okay Susan and Kathy we're on that athletic committee anyway so then it would be consistent okay that was all you need okay um can now best pardon can I make a request yeah will this committee also be sending back timely reports to the school board yes we have Susan on it probably will happen you're the chair host many because I'd love to follow what's happening between now and when we finally see it and so I just think well we'll publish the minutes probably good idea okay okay and then we have um, four policies that are up for first reading Susan um, yes in your packets um, the first one that we have listed here is policy adoption and amendment this was something that we already had um, in existence I, th I think we've <coughs> changed a little bit of the wording um, I think what you see in bold is just some language that we took from a um, main school management association sample that we received so that's um, we talked about it and figured that might be an improvement so that's that's that do we go through these should we stop and discuss them one by one if there's discussion it's only if people have questions okay any discussion on that any questions or no okay um, the next um, policy that you have is actually procedures around the same policy we just looked at which is policy adoption and amendment and um, this we took right from Maine School Management Association we didn't have any procedures in place and um, so we took this from uh, a sample that we had gotten from them and um, made a few minor changes to it to have it ready here tonight so questions discussion on that no okay um, the next one as I had mentioned earlier was before we stop kind of working on the policy adoption and amendment procedures because it, there does seem to be quite a bit more work that we could do on it but we have these these bigger blocks that are higher priority we did think it would be a good idea to get um, the administration and policy absence piece in place so in lieu of policy we've got something to follow and uh, so that's the next one that you have in front of you on that one it's school committee right. I already, yeah, I have that. oh yeah we took <laughs> we kind of took the language from, <laughs> from another source and it's not consistent with our terminology so we'll adjust that right Tom to read school I think board this is what this is what we do um, this policy just reflects what we do but there have been questions when there's when we do not have a policy and we I think um, in, in certain instances I know in the past we've we've used this language um, about what we do in the absence of policy but this way we have something that we can reflect back to 
My only question on this one, Susan, is do we need to differentiate between building policy and the higher level district wide policy? I guess that's. So to make it clear that we're talking about school board, school board policy and not. Yeah, I just, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, you know, we, we know that the individual building uh, principles establish policy that relates specifically to their situations, you know, and I'm sure that quite often we hear about it, but the jailhouse lawyers would come out and say that the principal perhaps can't make that policy decision because of this, and that's, that's my only concern as to whether we need any kind of further clarification. I'm not really sure we do. Mm -hmm. Well, did they make policy or did I make the policy? Yeah, at the school level, school level would be more guidelines and procedures. We may sometimes refer to it as policy, mm -hmm. but it probably is inaccurate to do that. Well, and therein lies the problem. Right. That goes back to like probably my management 101 classes where we were trying to determine what was a rule, what was a policy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and what the differences were in each. Uh, because, as you said, we ourselves refer to a lot of things that the building principle does as a policy. Yes, Tom. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just shaking my head when you said policy. At, at least at my level, I'm, I'm careful to say procedures because um, I can't make policy. So things I do either at the building level or related to school policy, I, I always call procedure. Probably the other principals do too. Well, actually, I was, I was talking more about us referring to your procedures as right. policies. I, I know that I've done it, and I, I kind of remember probably at any given point hearing everyone on this board at some time refer to a building procedure right. as a policy. Okay. We're clear. Oh, <laughs> I, I have. Not that school board, right? I have no concerns. <laughs> I think it's policy with a lower case. Maybe that's as it. Opposed to policy with a case. <laughs> so, so I don't think that there's been any substantive change to your your, your, your policy, Susan. Okay, and Kevin, in looking at it, do, do you? It sounds like that um, that you agree that if we really this is referring to school board policy and it won't get in the way of school administrators doing their jobs okay okay um, and the last one is um, what we uh, spoke about earlier um, that Claire Labrie had brought before us and the only change in this this is the referral pre-referral um, policy that we already had. The only change is the adding language. A referral in the Cape Elizabeth School Department is initiated when the referral form is received and signed by the Director of Special Education. And again, it's timing standards. There's a certain amount of time that we need to act on a referral, and this is just clarifying when the meter starts running on that action. So. And that's, and that's consistent with the state policy? Yeah, they recommended that we do this. Okay. So, any questions on those? Okay. okay. Then we'll move on to the paths budget. The, the, uh, the general advisory committee of Portland Arts and Technical High School has approved a preliminary budget, or actually the budget, for the 2003-2004 school year, and it's divided into two parts. The first part is uh, specifically the running of the building, uh, teachers, programs, things like that. The part two is specifically new programs, equipment replacement, um, that type of thing, and this year, the total budget is 64,134 dollars is for part one, and 4,194.74 is for the part two, which is more discretionary than the part one. Um, I would like to move that we 
approve the submitted budget for Cape Elizabeth School District of 64,134 and direct the superintendent to inform Port Martin Technical High School of our decision. Okay. Do we have a second? Elaine, all those in favor? Okay, seven zero. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Um, and the last thing on our list is um, the speech trip to Natick, Massachusetts. Um, Maggie Jones, the speech coach, is recommend, recommending that we approve the trip. It's, a, it's school board policy that um, any out-of-state trip, um, even though this is a day trip, um, needs to be, have the approval of the school board. It is a day trip, um, which there was late notice on. We're just requesting permission to be able to, to go out of state for this competition. And it's for this Saturday, December 14th. Okay. Um, can we have a motion to approve this trip? Elaine? Um, I move that we approve uh, the requested trip for this Saturday for the speech team, speech, uh, team uh, for an out-of-state day trip. Okay, thank you. Second? Susan, all in favor? Seven, Kevin, seven zero. Okay. Um, and just, I'll just go over the dates for future meetings. Policy subcommittee, subcommittee um, will meet on Wednesday, January 8th at 12 noon in the Jordan Conference Room. The finance subcommittee uh, will be January 14th at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room, um, followed by our regular school board meeting. And um, our next school board workshop is Tuesday, January 28th at uh, 7 o'clock. And uh, that means this is our last meeting of the year. No um, so, happy holidays to everyone. <laughs> um, and I guess we can take a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Susan, second. All in favor? 7 0.